Hi everyone, Brett back at Altitude Scale Modeling. With an end of summer, beginning of winter, September, October 2019 update. So, we got some builds to look at. I finished the Typhoon. I'm working on the Smoking the Bandit Trans Am. I got the train and the diorama going. I got the Blackhawk that I'm working on with Scott. I got a B-17 build. The next part goes up on this weekend. I've got, well, I've got a lot on the go. I've got the P-51 I'm doing for the Between the Beaches and the Bulge build. And I've got some tools to talk about, some new kits I've got, some new kit releases. So, let's switch cameras, take a look. All right, everyone, for this update, we're gonna look at what I've been buying. What I've been working on, what some future things are going to be. A little bit of this, a little bit of that. What is that? Huh. Looks like something I cut off of a kit. Okay, so what I've been buying. Now, some of you or most of you know that as part of my hardware store, I also have a hobby section in there. So I'm obviously not going to show everything that I buy. Because I have no willpower and I have a lot of kits in my stash. I'm going to show you the important releases, the odd things that I've been buying. Some that I've bought for, for the store that are mine and some that I bought off of eBay and other things. So let's start with a couple of new... Alright, go ahead. Boo, hiss, hiss, boo, hiss. Have you built a Kitty Hawk kit? Because I haven't yet. Anyway. Now this really cool Russian weapon loading cart set. Be nice for your Russian dioramas in 48 scale. This also I haven't opened it yet. Comes with some nice resin figures, which are not listed on the box. So I'm not sure if this is just an early release that has these or what, but I got them in mind. And then the next version, Pavehawk is in. Looking forward to it. Already got the Blackhawk, Pavehawk, Nighthawk I think is next, and I think Seahawk. But you know, Kitty Hawk does make good helicopter kits. Even if you don't like their planes, most people do like their helicopters. Next up, Hobby Boss. I've done a Yak 28 fire bar. Now, I do not know. I'm assuming this is a new tool. This is copyright 2019 there. Bobcat did a, this kit. And I was hoping it would say if it's a Bobcat kit, and it doesn't. So I'm assuming this is a new tool Hobby Boss kit. And some of these I'll be doing spur reviews on. Just wanted a quick look to see if and the copyright information in the big parts. I don't. And I don't have the Bobcat kit, so I can't compare. So, until we hear otherwise, let's just assume this is a new kit. I forgot to show you in this. Clearly it says here the crew are not included. Well in my version, in this little bag right here, there are two crew members. So again, some versions come with crew and some versions don't. And new versions have crew and old versions don't. Because this just came straight from one of my distributors. It wasn't a special order from Kitty Hawk. 
Next, we have this really big trumpeter Russian S300V SAM system. I love these big Russian monsters. This isn't as controversial as the book that everyone seems to be building right now. But, it does look good. Looks good to me. And, let's push them out of the way and save it for later. We're looking forward to this. Ryfield Models full interior M1240A1. Comes with full interior, full engine. Big fat heavy box, as you can see, was ruined in transport. But it's not for the box, it's for the kit. Look at all that beautiful plastic. Two frets of PE. Wow. So, yeah, I've been waiting for this for a while. It was announced a few months ago. I think this will just be fun. All opened up like that. Yeah. Exciting. And Great Wall Hobbies making kits again. I don't know, they seem to have stopped for a while. Now they're back. I do not know if this is new, but it's new to me. 35th scale World War II German motorcycle. Kind of cool looking. Get a review on that somewhere down the line. This panda. I don't do modern armor very often, but this just looks so cool. M109A7 Paladin, or Paladin, depending on where you're from. 2019 copyright. One of the things I like about this is... It comes with metal tracks. And pins for those metal tracks. It's like having frugal in the box. And it's got something in here. Does this come with figures too? Because we all know Panda and Kitty Hawk are the same company. Well, I guess we don't all know that. It does. It comes with a very nice resin figure. Oh, well, they've been figuring up their kits lately. So, look for a review on that. And... Because I like weird and wacky. Italian... Fiat BR20 from a Special Hobby. Short run kit, probably not the greatest in the world, but it's such an interesting looking subject. You know, we're all used to that big three engine Italian one. It's nice to see this in kit form. And you all know I build cars too, I love the cars. So I got a couple of classic kits off of eBay. An old Chevette, just because it's an old Chevette. And look, it comes with racing diorama parts. It comes with chairs, table, toolbox, canopy, which they're calling a rally tent, two figures. And it comes with a racing rally engine. So it comes with two engines. I'm sure the decals are shot to hell, but I didn't buy it for the rally version or the decals. So I'm going to build it. I'm going to make that old beat-up stock Chevette that a lot of us drove and drove, had. Next one I got off eBay. These are both sealed. Classic 74 Roadrunner kit. Three different ways, including the cop way. So you've got the push bar, driving lights, police radio, spotlights, roof bracket with the really old style lights on it. 440 engine with stock or drag setup. Two different types of wheels, different types of seats, spoilers, complete police version. And again, I'm betting when I do get around to opening and building this, because I am going to open it and build it no matter what you collectors think. The decals are going to be shot, but there is a um, well, scale model police website, and I can't think of what it's called right now. This is another car I just got. Sorry, I'm looking up this police website. Scale model police. Policecarmodels.com. You can get all kinds of stickers there for all kinds of scales. So I'll be looking up that. This um, 
James over at why can't I ever remember this stuff when I'm actually doing it? Am I getting that old? James over at hold on, I'm looking. I'm looking. The stash report showed this kit. And I like the scheme on it. I don't build a lot of these no-engine car kits. I love building engines. But I like the scheme on it. And mine has perfect cartograph decals in it. They look good. They're not faded. There's no yellowing there. At least I can see through there. So I'm going to be building it in this scheme. I want to use those decals before they go bad. Okay. And most of you know I don't do World War I, but I've got this weird wing nut wings bug been happening. So I got this, which comes with the pilot, William Barker. Looks pretty cool, still sealed, of course. And then, because I also like controversy, I got the Herman Goering one as well, because you know. Celebrating history. Oh, there's a nasty glare from that light. Celebrating history or understanding history. It's just not something that we want to do because we want to repeat history. Anyway, Hermann Goering was an ace in World War I. And then we know what happened after that. But this is what we're building it for. Good looking aircraft. Both of these. And because I'm a glutton for punishment. And I love seaplanes. Boom! Too big to even fit in the whole frame. The duelists. If you look at this picture on here, it's like half these guys are dead. This guy slumped over. Sorry. This guy slumped over. He's dead. This guy's shooting. Engine's on fire. This guy, or these guys, may or may not be dead. This guy's up here shooting away. So, I thought, you know, if I'm going to go for the whole thing, be a true aircraft modeler, I might as well just go for the whole thing. So I bought this for me, the Duelist set. Not even opened, I will be doing a review on it someday. And, uh, a couple more things. This one the review's done on, will be up on the site too, because hey, isn't that the coolest thing ever? It even comes with beer. Beer, man. So check out this review coming up in the next week. Your review's already done. There are three versions of this you can build. And it's got the frame and the interior for a four-door, which I've finally seen. But there is a four-door civilian version of this vehicle coming out. And then I got some books. I got Aces High, the D-Day version, because I love these books. These and the Weathering Aircraft book by Ammo. And I got AK's catalog because AK's catalog is more like a book. And not only do they talk about their products, they talk about using their products. And just because it looked fun and I like Hanes, I came out with this hardback model builder's manual. Now I've thumbed through it and read through it a little bit. And yeah, there's a lot of basic stuff in here, and there's a few things I didn't learn. But it's got great pictures. Great shots of old old modeling boxes and kits and, you know, Ravel's factory from the old days. You know, it talks about a lot of things. Just looking at the table of contents, you've got, in the beginning, manufacturing kits, scale, range, tools, paint, basic building, decals, displays, alternate techniques, collecting versus building. That should interest some people. Clubs, appendix. And this, David Barker from East Sussex, April 2019, the gentleman who did this book. Or maybe not, because it says Matter of Vine right there. Well, then who is this? Let's look and see. I mean, there's David Sussex right there. Or not. Because that could be all wrong. David Sussex. David Barker from East Sussex. Sorry, just wrote the intro, the foreword. Sorry. Matt is the writer. So, I just saw a really cool book. It's hardback. $22. Head to my book, model book collection. So, 
that's about where we stand on what we bought. Let me get things set up and we'll talk about what we're working on. I did forget to show one thing that I did buy. The Phalanx MK15 gun because I saw Under Siege and that just looked really cool. And Phil Floor did a review on this kit so I probably won't because there's not that much on it. I do love the Chuck Norris decals. And the eyeballs so you can make it like a Simpson head. But yeah, this just looks like something fun and different. And I may do a review just because not everybody watches Phil Flory. So what I've been working on, some of you saw pictures of this on a couple of pages. This is the diorama for my train build. This is the stop at the end of the tracks, which is part of a mini art kit. Um, just drop my tweezers. So, I'm using these figures for a little scene over here where they're sitting around a fire. Actually got one of them started. This was just being painted without primer and I don't like it so I'm going to build the other ones and primer them. And then the stop at the end of the tracks is part of this mini art railway dead end set because mini art just makes the hell out of anything you need. So, working on that, and the train itself. Let me move this big old chopper out of the way. The train itself is done in various parts. So, I've got this part all primered up. And this part all primered up. I want to show you how I'm doing the wheels. Uh, let me show you this other primary part. This part's all primed up. You can see it's going to be sitting here on the tracks. Like that. Okay. But, those of you who are railroad enthusiasts know that the wheels, you need to, let me sit back down, the wheels, the part of the wheel touch the track is always really shiny. I was, for life, Miko Fair, I'm going to make that look realistic. And to me, it looks pretty realistic. How I did that was, I used, of course I don't have any here. that thought. I used Mr. Metal Color Iron and Dark Iron. I guess put this back on since there's no glare. This is dark iron. Airbrushed a doll with dark iron. This is all dark iron. Then I took like a Q-tip here because it's buffable. Man, it wasn't this Q-tip, but you can use a rag if you want. And you just buff the shine right into it. There you go. So it went from that dull to that shine. So let's see that again. Dull. No fancy camera work here. And like I said, a good Q-tip. Let's get a good one out here. That's better. Because it gets in there. To shine. And same thing across the whole front. You see how that is? And you don't want this as shiny. You just want to get some of it off of there. Get some of the highlights shined up. 
Yeah, you're going to ruin your Q-tip, but hey, Q-tips are cheap. So there you go. That's how these parts are going to be sitting on the train, on the track. And you'll notice, let me set this down. The tracks are made with the same dark iron. That's why you get a metallic shine to them. Plus they've been done with rust pigments, rust washes, everything else to make them look all rusty and beat up. And obviously this has got to be painted and weathered and everything else. It's going to be sitting here with the block across the front. So, that's the train we've been working on. Get this out of the way. And Scott and I, not for about a month, but we have been working on one of my hair is not a cat hair. Working on this Black Hawk. It's upside down, I know, H60L direct action penetrator. Black Hawk from Academy because this was out before the Kitty Hawk ones and we had it. That one right there. We are on the interior. And as you can tell, we're using lots of photo etch. So this is the roof of the interior. Damn, that hair don't want to go anywhere. So, that's the inside roof of the interior. This is the inside floor of the interior with all the photo etch. And then a bunch of parts built up, seats. So this all needs primer, and that's my next step. That's Scott's next step. I've got the prop over there, the tail rotor. So we got that all ready to go. And I finished this Typhoon that I'm not happy with. The decals started falling apart. <sighs> and they melted under the most basic of UMP decal solution and Microsoft. The soft versions. Not even the intense versions. These decals just went to crap. I mean, my paint job wasn't all that great to begin with, but then the decals went to crap. Plus, I cracked the canopy, and it may look clear and wonderful, but it does have a big crack right across it. And the interior is the best looking part of it. I don't know if you can see it very well. So, this was done, weathered up. Go on the display shelf because I do finish them even when they piss me off. And it was going really good for a long time, but it's an old Ravel kit that you can't get anymore. So, I have to finish that. Those of you watching my Airfix videos, these, the support vehicles, are weathered, ready to go on the diorama. The plane itself needs a gloss coat on it, so I can start decaling it and weathering it. Putting the other small parts on it. It's pretty close to ready to go. So, and my Smokey and the Bandit build, because I have way too many builds on the go, is right here. I got the car going on, I haven't started the truck yet. Primer the chassis. Got the interior done, I think it looks pretty good. You can see the instrument panel. I put seat belts in it. The CB radio is in there on the bottom in front of the gear shift. I do have the hat that came with the get, kit. I need to do that. I've got the start of the engine bay going with the brakes and master cylinder and some hosing detail. The engine. Detailed, wired, weathered. Looking pretty good. So that's moving forward. The body. Needs dusted, needs a final rub down, and then one more gloss coat, and I'll be ready for decals. Okay, and then a long term video project that I'm working on. And if you saw my old school Dauntless review, which I 
here is the dotless fuselage, the interior, one of the interior panels. I bought photo etch for it, thinking, oh, photo etch. Well, that photo etch set came with one, two, three, four sprues, and that's not counting the flap set that I bought. So I am doing the PE video build, which I have done this part. Wrong, I might add. And well, maybe as far as I've gotten, I've done the instrument panel with these parts, the machine gun housing parts, and the triggers, not the triggers, the slides that I just broke one off of, and it's right down here somewhere. So I've done that. Oh, I just broke the other machine gun top part off of there. That's why you got to be careful with your PE parts. So this is an ongoing tutorial of doing lots of PE. I will be using almost all of this. As you can see, these are the side panels. And you'll be seeing my mistakes because I shouldn't have cut the ridges. This is the other side panel. See these ridges here? I shouldn't have cut those out. Those should have stayed. So I'm hoping that's not going to cause a problem when I put it together. So you're going to see those mistakes. And then you'll see me cutting the flaps out and using the new flaps. I got this part all done in the video. And I've started this part right here. So I will post that probably in another week or so. And I think that's all I currently have on the go right now. Except for this new Edward Mustang right here that I'm doing for a, from the beaches to the bulge group build and I've actually just started I put the PE on the instrument panel so as far as I've gotten with that this one has to be done by the end of the year so it probably gets stepped up pretty quick I think so where we are I use these AK weathering pencil set on my B-17 weathering the vehicles, in case you saw that, or if you want to see what it looks like, maybe if I opened it the right way. This is what the whole set looks like, which you can buy all these individually, but there's the full set. You can buy the individual ones at lots of places, including a place called HighAltitudeHobbies.com. And... For tools, the only real tool I got was this new display handle. It currently has a scribing blade in it. And available are, these are called tungsten steel brooches, which are like chisels. They come in sizes from this one being, if I can read that small, 0.3 millimeter all the way up to 3 millimeter. 0.3 to 3. Nope, even smaller than that. This is 0.1 millimeter all the way up to 3 millimeter. It also comes with scribing bits, which is what this one is. And they go from 0.1 all the way up to 1. It also has a couple of, they're calling carving needles. There are only pretty much things just one size carving needle. Yep, and then there's a um, triangular carving knife. These are all like really lethal things. That's the only tool that has presented itself to me anyway recently. This is a Mad Modelworks, sorry, Mad Madworks scribing tool that I also got. I haven't really used it much. 
And then these are the scribing bits, since we're in here. I go with the Tamiya, wherever that may be. I don't currently see it on my bench, but there's a Tamiya scriber. And none of these are cheap. Do you need a whole set? No, you need to figure out what you need and then get what you need. I, being a tool whore and a model reviewer, bought the whole set. I took it for you guys. I'm also working on getting... I have the full range of Tamiya lacquers. I bought them from Japan. I'm working on getting the full range as soon as they're available in the U.S. into my store. I'll let you know when that is. And I think... We have accomplished everything for this update that we possibly can. If not, I shall bring it up on camera in a moment. Uh, thanks to Ivan, Northern Modeler, I bought these for my modeling patterns on my German aircraft. I haven't used them yet, but I do have them. I think that's about it. Is it? Let me take a quick look around. I don't see anything else. No new paints, no new glues. Seen the weathering pencils. Seen my builds. Well, I guess that's about it. So, let's head on over for a little farewell. A little finale, a little hasta la vista, baby. So, there you have it. You've seen what I've been working on these last several months. And what I'm going to be working on, and what I bought, and yes, I buy too much. And, you know, I can't help it. It's fun. Besides, I'm about to have seven months of winter. We got about 18 inches in three days last week. And we've had some nice days, and we're going to have some more nice days coming up. But winter is the time we build. Sales at the store slow down. Online sales pick up. Christmas is coming. You know, if you have anything you want to buy, check out HighAltitudeHobbies.com. They've got some nice things over there. That's where I do all my shopping. So, thanks for watching. Thanks for hanging out. Thanks for all the subscribers. Keep subscribing if you want. Hit the like button. You notice I don't ever ask for money on here because you guys need your money for building stuff and this I got a job for a reason and I do these videos for fun so I don't ask for donations none of the kits I get come from any manufacturers I don't expect anything free from anybody I give an unbiased review of all the products and all the builds and there's nothing wrong with people who do ask for money and who do this for a living hell I wish I could bottle for a living but, you know, I've got expensive tastes. i got the Challenger, i got the Camaro, I've got my models, I've got my music. You know, got to work. So this is for fun and hopefully informative for you guys. So I'm going to try those um, wing, that wing kits sometime. Since i got that huge one. We'll see what it does. And I guess that's it for now. If you have any questions or comments or what do you want to see in the old school sprue reviews, let me know in the comments below. Smash that like button. Hit that bell icon. You know all the things everybody says that I never say. Thanks for watching. Sit your ass in the chair and build a model. Uncle Brett wants you.